What Elon Musk and scientists really think of James Webb Telescope. There seems to be a lot of interest in the James Webb Space Telescope, and most recently, it triggered a reaction from tech genius and billionaire Elon Musk. So what is this telescope that made Musk say, it's a big deal? And interestingly, what took 30 years and $10 billion to accomplish this telescope? Well, as you know, there's one way to find out. Give the video a thumbs up and stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to Genius's Guide, your daily dose of geniusness. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the world's most expensive yet, most advanced telescope ever. So without any further delay, let's get into it. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, which is currently the world's most powerful and most complex observatory ever built, is just steps away from unlocking the most profound cosmic secrets and the anticipation around it has reached an all-time high. On December 24th, the Webb Telescope was launched into space. Since then, there have been many eyeballs glued to the telescope. Most recently, it triggered a reaction from tech genius and billionaire Elon Musk. Elon Musk responded to a BBC Twitter article that shed light on Webb's aims of searching for the end of darkness by calling it a big deal. But why did Elon Musk call Webb's mission a big deal? For those of you who are new to this whole realm of science, launching the Webb Telescope is actually a pretty big deal for quite a few different reasons. To begin with, the telescope is a collaboration between NASA, the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Canadian Space Agency, CSA. The telescope has been under development for 30 years and is now reaching the final stages of its program. It is also important to keep in mind that aside from the insanely long amount of time, the space agencies have invested close to $10 billion to make Webb a reality. Another reason why the Webb telescope is big is where it's going. It's designed to detect even the faintest of infrared light. It will peer back nearly 13 billion years to when the first stars appeared. Through this telescope, scientists will be able to travel back in time to learn how the universe got filled with light in its early days. Before the Big Bang, the universe was nothing but darkness, and this darkness was eliminated with the formation of the first stars far away from our planet. Using its 21-foot gold-plated mirrors, the telescope will look for the first star's light billions of years ago. The gold-plated mirrors on the JWST have a total diameter of 6.5 meters, which is much larger than Hubble's 2.4 meter diameter plate. Overall, the JWST will provide a view that is roughly 15 times broader than the Hubble Space Telescope. JWST senior project scientist and Nobel Prize winner John Mather said, They will be just a little red speck. We think there should be stars or galaxies or black holes that may be beginning 100 million years after the Big Bang. There won't be many of them to find at that time, but the Webb Telescope can see them if they're there. And if we're lucky. You might be wondering, who would get the honor of having such a historic telescope named after them? Well, this title belongs to James Edwin Webb, who served as the second administrator of NASA, best known for his leadership of Apollo the first space program to send humans to the moon. In addition, he played an important role in the two crewed space programs that followed Apollo, Mercury and Gemini. While Webb ultimately did die in 1992 at the age of 85, he left a massive legacy behind, deserving of a telescope named after him. Former NASA administrator Sean O'Keefe said about the observatory's name, It is fitting that Hubble's successor be named in honor of James Webb, Thanks to his efforts, we got our first glimpses at the dramatic landscape of outer space. He took our nation on its first voyages of exploration, turning our imagination into reality. Despite its name, the telescope hasn't always been named after Webb. This telescope was originally known as the Next Generation Space Telescope, a name which, in our opinion, was not the most imaginative we've ever heard. Pretty amusing, right? However, a question must arise. What will be the orbit of the James Webb Space Telescope. As soon as the JWST launches into space, it will orbit the Sun, flying up to 1.5 million kilometers from Earth and reaching a temperature of minus 223 degrees Celsius. Comparatively, the Moon is located 384,400 kilometers from us, while the Hubble Space Telescope is located just 570 kilometers above the surface of our planet. 
Due to the fact that JWST will operate so far away from Earth, if any problems arise, astronauts will not be able to assist with the problem. There are a few reasons why it will be this far in advance. Well, it will be located in a place where the gravity of the Sun and the Earth work together to keep the satellite in place, in addition to being far enough away from the reflected radiation of the Earth to help keep it cool. But how is the James Webb Space Telescope different from Hubble? In many ways, the James Webb Telescope is seen as a more improved successor to the Hubble Telescope that was launched back in 1990. Yet, are these two telescopes similar or are they quite different from one another? Well, first of all, both telescopes see light in a different way. The Hubble Telescope is primarily concerned with both visible and ultraviolet light. Even though it can observe only a very small part of the infrared spectrum, it is nowhere near the extent of what the JWST is capable of observing. JWST is designed with an eye, specifically directed towards the infrared spectrum. Unlike Hubble, unlike Hubble, it is unable to see in ultraviolet light, but will be able to focus on bright objects such as very distant galaxies. In addition, the James Webb Telescope is also larger than the Hubble, mostly due to its large sun shield. This is a very important feature on all space telescopes, but particularly important on the James Webb due to its infrared cameras. If it isn't kept cool, it could risk blinding itself to the lights of objects it is trying to observe. Moreover, one of the most tantalizing capabilities that JWST has over Hubble is its potential to image distant planets directly, and maybe even detect signs of life if such a planet is orbiting a distant star. In the 1980s, CFCs caused a hole in Earth's ozone layer, but an international ban on their use in 1987 helped reduce the level of CFCs. If these potent greenhouse agents with long atmospheric residence times are found anywhere in the galaxy, they're almost certainly the result of an industrialized civilization. In other words, the very thing that makes us detectable may be some of humanity's worst byproducts, pollution. That means we might find other species that treat their planet's atmosphere the same way. There are some limitations to JWST's CFC finding. If a planet's star is too bright, it will drown out the signal. Hence, the telescope will do best with stars in the M-class, which are dim, long-lived red dwarfs. TRAPPIST-1, a red dwarf 40 light-years away, has a bunch of planets orbiting within its habitable zone. JWST will be able to see CFCs on TRAPPIST-1's planets, since the dim star won't mask the CFC signature like a bright star, like our Sun, a G-type star, would. In contrast, a JWST-like telescope at TRAPPIST-1 wouldn't be able to see Earth's CFC because our Sun is too bright. Sadly, M-class stars are typically not conducive to life, because they are unstable when they are young, throwing out powerful solar flares that could wipe out any nascent life but they do calm down as they age, so it's not impossible. So I guess we just have to temper our expectations a bit. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Tell us in the comments, and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for us to provide you with more must-know developments in finance and technology. And we'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.